In this video, I'm going to tell you the easy ways that you can make, not just take, amazing photos of your miniatures and tell a story. I love miniatures and the miniatures hobby and the building and the painting and all that kind of stuff, obviously. Been doing this for a while. But I also love photography. I've been shooting pictures since I was in high school. Um, went to school for photography in college. Uh, I worked at a camera store for four years while I was in college. And uh, I've been doing this, which obviously requires uh, videography, which is kind of an offshoot of photography. But I've, the, my, my main two hobbies are basically miniatures and photography. And I, these days, obviously, end up taking a lot of photos of miniatures. And people ask me all the time, like, how to take photos of their miniatures to make their photos look better and to kind of go beyond the ordinary. And uh, so I'm going to tell you folks a bunch of tips so that you can do that. So there are two main types of miniature photography that seem to be out there. There are the, the photographs that are there to showcase the paint job. Um, you know, if you are, you know, trying to show the paint job specifically, there's a way to shoot that way. You're usually shooting on a very simple background. Maybe it's white, maybe it's black, maybe it's one of those like light blue to white fade kind of gradient things or whatever that you see. And the lighting is very flat because you don't want to add in shadow that you didn't paint in there. You want to see it in kind of the perfect light for understanding and appreciating the paint job. Uh, those photos in general bore the stuffing out of me. They're just really kind of dull, but that's not what they're there for. They're there to show off the painter's, you know, like thing, you know, what they're doing. And maybe it's to get them, uh, you know, some sort of entry into a contest. Maybe it's to get them, uh, you know, people to commission them to paint and stuff like that. It totally makes sense. They have their purpose, but I kind of find them sort of boring. Now, the other type of photography for miniatures is pictures that look cool and tell a story. You see these images in the fancy magazines. You see them in the codexes and the battle books from the big companies and stuff like that. And they do a lot to really not just show the miniatures and go, oh, here they are, you know, just so you can check out the paint. They're in an environment, they're in terrain, they're in formation, all that kind of stuff. And that type of stuff, that's been kind of my passion lately. The lighting is dramatic. Uh, there's more stuff off in the background. The focus is important because sometimes you want things to be, you know, definitely sharp in the, in the front and then, you know, you know autofocus in the back, all that kind of stuff. And that's the type of photography that we're going to talk about today. Now, let's get the tech stuff out of the way right up front. You can use your cell phone, probably. Maybe if it's like an old flip phone, then maybe not so much. Or if it's a really, really, really old smartphone, you will be fine. Now, I have the newest fancy iPhone because I am a, a fancy lad, and it has been several years since I'd upgraded, so I updated this year. But honestly, most phone cameras within the last, I don't know, five, six years are great. They do great work. Now, the important thing about using your cell phone camera and I made a video about shooting just, you know, normal photos with your cell phone camera years ago. Pachow. And a good portion of that still, especially the lighting parts, uh, that, that's, that's still, you know, on, on brand. Um, but the trick is, is that don't use the standard camera app. For taking pictures of your friends and your pets and whatever, works great. For taking pictures of miniatures where you want to be very specific about where the focus is and the aperture and the lighting and all that kind of stuff, using an app that you download, put on your phone, that gives you more control over the camera is super important. On the iPhone, I use Pro Camera by Moment or Pro Cam 8. Kind of depends. Honestly, Pro Camera by Moment, I like the focus a little bit better. Um, on Android, and I don't really use Android, but I hear that Pro Cam X Lite, which I don't think is the same company. I don't think those are the same Pro Cam, but I could be wrong. Pro Cam X Lite, which is free, and Open Camera are, are good. Now, I believe the two for iPhone are also free but they probably have like in-app purchases to give you extra features and junk like that. But what you're mainly looking for are the manual controls, focus, uh, ISO, stuff like that. Now, of course, you can certainly use fancier cameras too with the interchangeable lenses or you know, that kind of stuff. And then understanding how the controls and the features on those types of cameras, how they work, what they do, and how to make them work best for you is specifically a very, very good idea when you want to get into this type of 
I mean, frankly, it's almost like product photography. It's not journalism. It's not action photography. It's not landscape. It's shooting stuff in a very small area and setting up the lighting and doing all that kind of stuff. So go and check out on YouTube. Whatever kind of fancy camera you might have that's not a cell phone, there will be videos on YouTube that teach you the best ways to use it and control it and uh, make it do what you want. Now, whether you're using a phone camera or a fancy schmancy camera, you're going to want a tripod. Normal cameras with interchangeable lenses or whatever, they usually have a little screw hole on the underside and you screw the tripod part into that and that's how you attach it. With a phone like this, you need a clamp. You need some sort of thing that attaches to the phone, spring loaded, and then it puts the little hole here or here that you can then screw a tripod into. This is a tiny tripod that I bought for 10 bucks at the photo store and it works real great for being able to set your phone uh, and take the pictures that you want right there on the tabletop. This one here from Amazon is like 13 bucks and it extends up to like 51 inches and it comes with the clamp and I think a little Bluetooth trigger and all that stuff. You can turn it into a selfie stick if you want. You don't need much, but the trick is, is the camera, whether it's your smartphone or whether it's a fancier camera, needs to be stable when the photo is taken. So get yourself some sort of tripod. Lighting is also very important and Lord knows you can go nuts and be fancy with your lighting as far as the cost of the different lights and things like that. I'm doing that myself here. But for this type of photography, especially as you're first getting into it, it doesn't have to be. First, most important thing you want to start with is turn off the lights in the room. You don't want the fluorescent lights in your room or stuff like that to be coming in and adding light that you can't really modify very easily, you know, to the scene. You want to be able to control all the light and just having a big honking like above light coming down, it just doesn't look right, right? So just turn off the lights and then start lighting with other stuff. Nearly any kinds of lights can be used. You can use desk lamps. You can use like those clamp lamps that maybe you use for when you're doing your hobby. Um, you can use all kinds of different things. You block overspill of light. So if you put this light here and it's shining down on a miniature, but you don't want it to get on the background or the terrain behind the miniature, that kind of stuff, Get yourself a piece of cardboard and just sort of maybe tape it to the light or you can hold it up or whatever. Make sure it's not in the shot, but it will block light. Having multiple lights going, a bright one from one side, a slightly lighter one from, or, you know, darker one from the other side to just fill in some shadows, all that kind of stuff. It's really important and you can learn a lot just by setting up some miniatures and then just moving the lights around to figure out and look through the camera and say, oh, that's what that does. And it's, it's, it's a good idea. You can also color your lights. So if you want not just normal you know, like white lights, you want to go with red light or blue light or green or anything along those lines, you can color your lights with something as simple as plastic report covers and then some tape. You, know, you get those plastic report covers at the, uh, at the office supply store. You can find them online. It's a clear piece of plastic, but it's like blue tinted or orange or green or yellow or whatever. You put your report in there. You can cut that up and tape it over a light and uh, it will modify the color of the light and work quite well. You used to have to be a lot more careful when adding plastic to a light like that because the lights used to get really warm. Light bulbs used to get really hot, but nowadays LED bulbs, they stay pretty cool, so you shouldn't have to worry. Now, if you do want to get fancier, you want to start adding a lot more color and things like that to your shots, these lights here are like 40 bucks on Amazon and they are full RGB, rechargeable, you know, like whatever color you want. And uh, they've got a little, again, quarter 20 thing so you can attach them to a tiny tripod or whatever. I generally use these lights from a company called Falcon Eyes. And this is the F7 lights. They're like 100 bucks, and they're magnetic and also rechargeable and also fully RGB and dimmable and all that stuff. They're really, really nice. But honestly, some, you know, colored plastic over a normal bulb will also do the job. One of the most important things to taking these really interesting shots is to set up your scene and take your time. Find the best terrain that you have for the story that you're trying to build and set up the model, set up the terrain, and then just start iterating. Move things around, look how it looks on the camera. Move things around, look at how it looks on the camera. If the surface that the minis are gonna be standing on is gonna be seen in the photo, then honestly, a 3D surface will look better than a game mat. Game mats, especially as you start to get closer to them, have that sort of fabric texture, which looks really fake. So if you can find or make or whatever, some sort of 3D 
surface, it will look a lot better. But here's the deal. The ground doesn't even need to be seen in your photo if you don't want it to. And I'll talk more about that in a sec. Move the model, move the terrain, move the lights, move the camera. Just keep iterating and figure out what's going to work best for you. This will take time if you want a really good shot. But here's the deal. Digital photos are cheap. Like back in the day when I first started, you had to buy film. There were only so many shots in the film and you didn't know what it looked like until you got it back developed. Nowadays, just shoot and keep shooting until you get what you want. Overall background is important. I have a tendency to go dark myself, but sometimes I do go light. Uh, but you want it to be something that doesn't take away from the, the, the actual miniatures that you're taking a picture of. You want that background to be pretty far away. If you take a miniature and you set it up real close to uh, the wall, you're going to get the wall in the photo. It's going to be definitely something you see. You might even get shadows on the wall, which you don't want. You want to be further away from the background. You want the models to always be closer to the camera and the terrain and the background and all that stuff way off in the distance, several feet back, if not more, if you can pull that off. When I'm shooting my photos, the actual backdrop in the backdrop is probably five feet away from where the, the actual miniatures are, and it works out real well. But some big piece of dark wall or maybe a light wall with nothing on it or a big piece of foam core or something like that, it could be in white or black or all kinds of different colors. I use this thing that's like a pop-up photographer's background that folds all up, goes in a smaller package, but it pops up and it's like five foot by seven. If the background is far away, pretty much anything should work, but also keep an eye on what it looks like in your photos. If you want the model to stand out against that background, move the terrain and the background back, as I said. And also, it's sometimes a good idea to have the background be both dark, kind of, depending on the story you're trying to tell, and also, for sure, out of focus. Focus close on the miniature, get the miniature close to your camera, focus there, and then the background will drop away because you're really trying to focus on that actual miniature anyway. Another trick, get your camera down low. This is a mistake that I see all the time in, 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 in photography and stuff like that for miniatures and specifically all over the internet. If miniatures are photographed from kind of above, even a little bit above, it makes them look small because you're shooting them, you're taller than them, you know, from the point of view, you're shooting down on them, they look like a bunch of miniatures. But if you get down to eye level, or specifically even a little bit below the miniature, uh, then, like I said before, the ground is not important because it won't be in the shot. Now, how do you get below the miniature? Like, let's say you've got, you know, a, a tripod like this and you're sitting on the table. Well, the miniatures are down. It, how's that going to work? Raise your miniatures up. The, the surface that you're going to be shooting on, put it on top of some cardboard boxes, put it on top of some old game boxes or something like that. And then if you've got the tabletop, you know, tripod, you can actually be shooting up a little bit at the miniatures or get your tripod on the ground. I mean, obviously if it's a tiny one like this, that won't work, but a taller tripod, put it on the ground, shooting up against the edge of the table and have the miniatures towards the end of the table. You can actually have the camera be down lower than the miniature shooting up and that will make the miniature look bigger and more imposing and, and, and whatnot versus shooting it from above. One last photography trick when shooting pictures of your miniatures, use the timer function on your camera, whether it's a, sm a smartphone or whether it's a regular camera. They will have a timer function. And what that is usually for is it's, I want to be in the picture. So you hit the thing and it counts down and you get in the front. You want to use that when shooting pictures of miniatures, when you want to use that when shooting still stuff. You have it on a tripod, everything is set up, everything's ready to go, and now you poke the camera to take the picture and it makes the camera shake, which makes the picture blurry. So what you're doing instead is you're setting the timer for, usually it's, I don't know, five to 10 seconds, something like that, depends on the camera, but you set it to that self timer is what it's called, and then you tap it and then that makes the camera vibrate and it counts down and the camera stops vibrating and then the shot happens. And then that way you get a sharper picture. So use the countdown feature on your, st unless you've got some sort of remote, that also happens sometimes too. But if you don't have a remote, your camera's gonna have a countdown feature, use it. It really makes your pictures look better when you're shooting miniatures. Once your photos are taken, it is okay to edit them. Some people, when taking those kind of more, kind of, uh, you know, technical pictures that I talked about at the beginning of the video, against the white background or whatever, just to really show off the paint, some people, if they over edit too much, people will be like, oh, you're making your, your piece look better than it actually looks in person and your Photoshop. Maybe you're better a Photoshopper than you are a painter, that kind of stuff. You hear those things at contests and, and competitions. But when you're just trying to make a cool photo that's just going to be like a cool story, you can edit the heck out of it. You can add in cool stuff like 
laser blasts or you know uh, f- lens flare or whatever you want to. It's totally okay to edit these photos when you're trying to tell a story. Um, if I'm on my phone, I'm generally using a program called Snapseed, which is made by Google, but it's on both Android and iPhone, and it's free. It's what I usually use when I'm editing any kind of photo on my phone. Uh, now, if I shot something on my, you know, on a regular normal camera, then I usually use Adobe Lightroom on my PC. It is expensive, but I already have it because I pay the monthly thing for Adobe and all that jazz. But let me know what photo editing software that you use, whether it's on your phone or whether it's on your, you know, regular computer, if I haven't already mentioned it. Put that in the comments down below. It'll be helpful. Once you have your cool new photos that are telling a story, all completely edited and looking exactly the way that you want, then you can put them up on whatever flavor of social media that you like or whatever. I got to be honest, I've been doing less and less Instagram lately. It's just constantly like, hey, why don't you follow these people? Hey, you you like this, so why don't you like to do it? It's a lot. If you've used Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, So lately I've been putting stuff on Twitter, things like that. But, you know, maybe it's not all about the social media. Maybe you can even get them printed and hang them up in your hobby area or your gaming space. I've done some of that myself. It's kind of cool to have those pictures sitting around. Using your miniatures to tell stories through photography is, I think, a very cool way of showing off your miniatures to other people and not just on a boring, normal background. Other painters sometimes like to see, especially if you're a display painter, specifically just on that normal background. But other folks who just want to see cool pictures, they like seeing it when you do neat stuff with your miniatures and whatnot. And it's another great reason to keep you painting more miniatures and also terrain and things like that. And the more that you do it, the more that you might find that you, you know, love photography as well. And as hobbies go, it goes pretty hand in hand with miniatures. I hope you learned something from this video. And if you liked it, hit the like button down below. It really does help the channel and it's free. Also subscribe to see more of this kind of stuff, which is also free. And let me know if you'd like to see a complete like start to finish photo shoot you know, setting up the lighting, setting up the camera, setting up the terrain, all that kind of stuff, uh, just like a, just so you can kind of see how the overall thing is done the way I do it, and maybe the way you end up doing it too. Let me down, know down below in the comments if you, you're interested in that kind of thing. And thanks for watching.